Hello, thank you, Shauna. It's 7.06. We are live on April the 16th at 7.06 at Council Chambers 400 Center Road. Call to order. And uh, the agenda is before us. Can I have adoption of the agenda? First, second, thanks. Any changes? Who's that a uh, late hands up? Okay. I have several, but you can go first. Uh, under 12, if you could add B, if you please. Uh, precise park link meter contract. Precise, what was the second word? Park link is all one word. Park link. Meter contract. Meter. See a verbal report, but I'll have the contract to Contract, pass thank you very much. Anything else, CAO? No. If I can, um, uh, if sorry to do this, I know that I get my hands slapped every time I do this for reports under staff. If we can add item 8A4, and it is Public Works Week. And uh, under Mayor's report, could we, uh, where is that Mayor guy, anyhow? There he is. Um, so at night, number two would be glass notice board. Number three would be village update, op-ed on septic systems. Op ed. On what? Septic systems. Uh, number. What's sort of the next one is? It would be uh, wood burning. And the last one would be. These are short, Peter. And the last one it would be LGMA Exchange Magazine. Uh, any other changes? There being none, can I have a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? Thank you. Second. All in favor? Good. We are going live now. Public participation. We're shy of public tonight, so none. No delegations we know of. So if we go to item number five and think back like it was yesterday on January the 4th. And I'm sure everybody recalls this just like it was coffee this morning. Uh, can I, uh, any changes to the minutes? To those other than Norm, or Councillor Barney, I kind of love who weren't there. That thins the crowd, Councillor Abbott. <laughs> they look fine. They're fine, they're fine with me. Can I have a motion to accept the minutes as they are? Thank you. I will second. All in favor? Good. We are done. Uh, item D, 5B. Uh, and that would be on starting on page 7 of 104. And I have one change, and this would be for the CFO. And this is on page 10 of 104. And it would be the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 bullet point. And I'm just thinking here the term infrastructure reserve, because um, oh, yeah. it should be yeah. that special little name that you want to apply to it. <coughs> Septic no, reserve just, or? No, it's actually just from the sewer surplus. Thank you. Could you shout it out for Shauna? Sewer surplus. <laughs> we should always have a surplus of sewer. Okay, I have no other changes. Anybody else? And I believe we, oh, there we go. We have a, a few, well, came to one all in the same place. So just uh, bullet points above that, the Council Abbott proposed a three-step public participation process. First bullet's fine, second bullet is definitely not. I never suggested a referendum or for that matter a survey. Um, the only okay. point that it, it wasn't to be either of those, so if we could change that to... Um, I suggested there may be some question, and I didn't know what it was, so who could write, may change that to read some question could be included, but a referendum or survey need not be undertaken. Are you good with that, Sean? Some. One more time? Yeah, please repeat the 
some question could be included, yeah. but a referendum or survey need not be undertaken. Unless anyone thought we said differently. Sorry, Councillor Abbott, what, what, what would the some question be included pertain to? Included to, in what? Um, to the flyer, first point, the flyer going out. Oh, state. I see, okay, for yeah. the bullet ones. Okay. And someone asked me, is there going to be a survey? On what's on the back? I think you might have asked. And I said, maybe we can come up with a generic question that brings input or engages input. But it's certainly not a referendum. I would not use that word or a survey. The next bullet, town hall meeting on May 7th. I definitely did not mention the town hall meeting. It pays to say it wasn't one. The only mention of the town hall meeting was when the mayor mentioned it. It was corrected we're not having one. So if we could read, let, let that be discussed and reviewed at council meeting of May 7th. Councillor Abbott, you want to read that one? And then if we could add one more bullet, which I think would clear it up. I, I did say, if required, a special meeting could be held before or after May 7th if we had a significant input. It was a special meeting, not a town hall. That was just in reference to if, you know, we didn't have time to get it done. <coughs> Anything else, Councillor Abbott? No, nope, I'm good with that, thank you. Sean, you all good with that? Yeah. Anything needs needing reading back? We all good? Uh, any other changes? Staff, no? Councillors, no? Uh, all in favor of the minutes as amended? All motion, second, thank you, Councillor Cunliffe. All in favor, yes, we are done, thank you. Moving on to business arising from the minutes. I, my sense is that we're going to see some of these again tonight, so I have none. Um, I, yeah, just um, one. So the, the bullets that follow the wood, um, wood restriction report, one of them says we are going to include this on the unfinished business. Some of them imply that one of them says it's going to be dealt with with the strategic planning session. Um, none of them are on the unfinished business log at the moment, which is what I suggested. How do we how do we keep these current? Are they going to be on the unfinished business log? Or what is it suggested? Good question. Well, I think we understand the thread, CAO. Uh, so we're talking about the bottom of 11 of 104. It goes into the there, there actually is one of them included uh, on that list, and that is investigate option of falling outside the UCB to avoid future bylaws intended for larger municipalities. Um, and the other thing, I mean, the, the one about um, um, moving, you know, bringing something forward to, you know, cost-benefit analysis of being part of Metro was to be brought forward to the next strategic planning session. But mm -hmm. that, so that wouldn't, that wouldn't appear every meeting in the, un, in the uh, fuel at the beginning of the agenda. Sure. That, that would be too redundant. Um, and the first, first and second are addressed over the page. Yeah, at this point in time, the building bylaw is not ready to come forward. So that's yeah. a, that's a future action that you know we don't yeah. need we don't need to see every every week yeah, in the agenda until we'll we such. About this. I won't. Okay. Pardon me. So I'm sure we won't forget about. It no, no. I, I was actually at a conference today where they okay. discussed the new model uh, building bylaw that um, I'm looking at. Uh, so uh, the next one, educate residents. Um, that just seemed like a. That's just uh, something to be done in October, yeah. um, so it wouldn't appear. Um, and contact BC Hydro, you were going to do that. Um, yeah, so I have a verbal update I can give on some of that. Mm -hmm. um, do it, should I just tell you where I'm at now, or do we want to put that on the unfinished business log so I keep getting to actually writing a letter if that's what it comes to? Actually, actually, it's kind of a keen bit of information. I'd rather write something a little more formal and verbal. 
Because it sounds like something in your event investigation is something that can happen. Um, no, I can just give you an update on what I've heard. Oh, okay. Information. <laughs> <Then> spill it. <laughs> okay. Um, so we know of three residents that has this, so it does exist. Peter's point to one of the conversations with one of the residents. Um, someone told me that a former mayor, um, Doug Miller, had written to the Utilities Commission. So I actually spoke to Doug Miller. I was sort of misunderstood. I mis uh, mis was sort of said he did it recently, not when he was the mayor. He wrote to the Utilities Commission. Um, so I asked him if he could uh, give me a copy of that, if he still got it, and we see what we can do with it. Um, so I don't know how many residents were involved in this letter, because it sounds like lots of people knew about it. But anyway, he's going to see if he can dig it up. So that's the only updates I've got so far. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right, so then I think uh, what we've got is the one in the unfinished business, so that sticks. Thank you very much. Can we do the species hard on the unfinished business? <clears throat> I don't mind having that pistol me until I actually get some resolution or something done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Shana, would you add that, please? <laughs> All right. Uh, any other business arising? Good. Uh, then we're done. Then we will go to item seven, unfinished business. CAO to John, you are batters up. Uh, first one, haven't uh, taken any steps yet. Uh, second one, I haven't done anything with that yet, but I was looking at that today and wondering why I'm actually doing anything. I don't know that it's necessary to respond to the Legislative Assembly of BC to tell them that we're going to look at this when we do our building bylaw. Oh, that just seems gosh, like, yes. a, like a... Now that you phrase it that way, I'm not sure how it ever weaseled down there. I'd be <laughs> I, so I, I'm suggesting that no response is required. How about we... That's a strike. So Shauna number 77 is a strike. Thank you. Uh, I haven't done the train whistle letter to Mr. Fair yet. Uh, rural dividend program letter to Metro, that's done. Uh, the option of investigating uh, the UCB has not been done yet. Um, on behalf of Councillor Bain, I can say that that letter to uh, Messrs. Tobin and Wilton has been done. I think it's in the correspondence today. Mm -hmm. um, and back to you, Mayor McLaughlin. Thank you, uh, CAL. The um, two items, uh, 85 and 86, are done. They're in the correspondence. They're a strike, and number 87, I'm going to deal with that in the marriage report. That will be, uh, I'll end up writing again. Okay. Do you want to remain on there? Pardon? Remain on, please. Thank you. Okie doke. Done for unfinished business. Hustling along to item number eight, reports. Staff, number one, CAO. Uh, so this is, uh, the report is basically a summary of, um, of the Asset Management Investment Plan final report. Um, and um, in a nutshell, uh, the report highlights that uh, we have about 44.2 million in assets, about 43% of which has been used up, about 11% of which has already passed its expected lifespan. And in terms of replacing all of our infrastructure and various a other assets um, uh, that would require uh, on an annualized basis about $1.2 million for us to be socking away if we were going to sock away 100% uh, replacement value. Um, we have the ability to do about 300,000, so we have a gap of about 900,000, and um, that's something that um, the municipality needs to begin addressing uh, as soon as possible, and um, has taken uh, the first steps towards. Um, the next phase of the asset management planning will be to move toward uh, forward with the grant funding application, which is the next report on the agenda. 
um, which will uh, seek to connect asset management planning to long-term financial planning, um, setting asset management replacement funding targets and developing plans to meet those targets. Um, as well, uh, we'll be looking at the development uh, of an annual, uh, annual reporting template. Uh, perhaps that will live in the um, annual report um, to the municipality. And that will assist in, we anticipate that will assist in communicating and understanding the, the metrics of our infrastructure and assets and um, provide us with a standardized way to communicate the information to um, future councils and to the community. So we look forward to advancing those things. Um, that's about it for the report. Uh, all right, so then uh, on page 18 of 104, the second paragraph is what staff will be doing in addition to the uh, into the application for another grant. And so the uh, if there's no other questions, and this is the chance to shoot your hand up. Thank you. Starting with Councillor Barman. Yeah, I just wanted to, you know, just maybe for for the audio, what, what specific steps is the municipality taking towards addressing the situation? Because you've re you read it out and kind of left out. It's the 10% tax. So that's, that's uh, our, yeah, that's that, our that's main. That's... So for the purposes of audio, um, yes, the report does state that uh, uh, the first step that Council uh, has taken is to pass two readings of, of uh, bylaw, which would see uh, the implementation of a 10% levy towards uh, meeting that uh, funding gap. Councilor Abbott? Um, yeah, I just have a couple of things. So I had kind of circled uh, this annual report. So, do we get that in the next cycle? Is that the way at the end of the year, or is it going to be earlier? Then? Is it going to wait to the next cycle of budgeting? Or? Every July first, or by July first, or June thirtieth, we have to produce an annual report, okay. uh, and do so every year. So uh, it, it contains a number of um, you know, it contains our financial um, statements. It contains. Uh, reporting from each of the departments of the municipality in terms of what uh, has taken place in the previous year. So the one for this year, for example, is really reporting on the 2018 calendar year. Um, and so going forward, I guess, I, I mean, I was just... So this, sorry, Peter, the developed this annual report from 10 that you mentioned. That's yeah, we don't have it. that at that point, this right. point. So yeah. I would anticipate we'd work on it this summer. Um, the person who did this final report was going to give us some samples. I mean, we will put things in the annual report in terms of some of these graphs, but we do, we are looking for something <coughs> concise, like a one or two page okay. report so that we would update annually. So and is it in, the, in the next budgeting cycle? Oh, absolutely. Yes. 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 Okay, yes. Yeah. And when I say that, the first budgeting schedule is now is a good time to bring that up. We'll start earlier this year. It's always delayed in the year there's an election, but I see that starting in November and December of this year. Okay. Um, so I think just one other thing that came up when we, we did this, everyone, well, several people felt that the drainage um, didn't seem to be accurately reported. A, it was undervalued, we felt, as to what it was worth. Are we going to correct that? At what point was that part of the template? I'm sorry, I didn't hear When we did this asset management, we had this presentation. Yes. There was a question from several people no, about, I, the, I got that about part. the drainage. Yeah. yeah. So are we going to correct this report or does this template you envisage adjust these numbers and will we yes. correct it in the next Yes, template? Yeah, exactly. That's the next step in the phase two is going through and um, taking a closer look at the numbers, use staff knowledge, fine tune the numbers. And that's why we talked about it being a living document. Yeah. This was the first attempt to bring it together. And that will also be part of, we would be doing that anyway, but it's also part of the second phase of the asset management going through fine tuning those numbers. And then based on those doing like a, try to do a 30 year projection of what our funding needs to be. Okay. So. If I remember correctly, the transportation one was a roads, correct? Is anyone else yes. Remember? Yes. Okay. And that's the other one that I think seems to be allowed away. Not as to the value of it, but the, the, I just find it hard to believe that our roads are our, like the next asset that has the longest life left in it. Mm -hmm. that, that's another one I think we should look at. Yeah. I just, you know, yeah. I think preventive maintenance on our roads, we're not doing it, and I certainly don't think we've got 50% of our roads. Or 40, 
five or more. Yeah, part of the challenge with roads, especially when TCA was brought in, there's um, two layers to the road, and um, there's a, a big value in what they call land under roads, and that was one of the biggest challenges when TCA was introduced. So um, I think when those two numbers are brought together, it sometimes makes it look like the roads are in better shape than they are, because you often don't go down to that mm -hmm. lower, lower level. It's like the surface that you see. So, but yeah, we will definitely look at that, but that is part of the issue, is that we have the upper layer of roads and the lower um, value of roads, and part of that is the value of the land under the roads as well, mm -hmm. goes into your roads number. Yeah, so if you allow the distortion to stay in place, we'll be around to fixing the roads and deteriorating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have that separated, so we can actually, um, we don't just look at it in an amalgamated way, we look at the upper part, which is the more valid part in terms of the deterioration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, which takes us back. Thank you very much, everybody, for the questions uh, and for the presentation material. Uh, I'll put forward the motion that the Asset Management Investment Plan final report be received. I have a second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of receipt. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. Moving on. EBCM, CFO? Yes, so um, as you may remember, in the 2019 budget, we um, were suspecting that a second phase of the asset management UBCM grant would be coming out. It has come out. It's a very tight timeline. It's due May 3rd. And it's the same grant that we got for the asset management plan. It's up to $30,000 project, and it covers 15%. So I budgeted for a $30,000 second phase project with a $15,000 budget. And as part of that application, like most grants, I need a, a resolution from council basically saying they approve us staff applying for the grant. Um, what we're looking at for the grant, um, it's just sort of high level right now because we get the resolution, we apply for the grant, and then we'll have to do an RFP for the um, second phase. So I'm hoping to get, at that, get that out so once we choose someone, we could get working on the project right away. But it's essentially to um, develop a 30-year asset management revenue plan, building on the asset management investment plan that we have, and getting it so we can start using it for our budgeting processes and um, helping determine what assets are the priority and how much money we have to put aside for future replacement of assets. And it'll be a big number. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, so, it will. Yeah, I'm quite excited about this. Okay, but it's important. There's two offerings of the grant this year, but it's um, first come, first serve. So we really want to get in for the May 3rd because when the second offering comes around, there may not be a second offering. These grants are very popular because it's everyone has to do asset management right now. It's required. Uh, so uh, it's more of a, not much of a question, but I'm seeing that at this point, and I like the italicized words, connecting asset management planning to long-term financial plannings, we are now inextricably connected at the hip to this going forward, and this qualifies us for all government grant type stuff. I mean, this is a need to, need to have, isn't it? Yes, it's actually a requirement yeah. to be, have some form of asset management in any grant application. So while we may not be leading edge, we're certainly somewhere in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're about in the middle, I think. High middle? Middle, middle. Okay, we're in the we're in the high middle. How do we win? <laughs> well, I think we're we're making steps. Okay. Um, so uh, the recommendation on the table. Any other questions? Nope. Uh, so the recommendation recommendation is that council direct staff to submit a UBCM asset management planning program grant application for asset management phase two connecting asset management planning to long-term financial planning and to provide overall grant management of the project. Can I have a motion? Good. Second. All in. Any discussion? Done. All in favor? Good. Carried. Thank you. CAO, you are up next. Uh, so this report is uh, on uh, budget communication principles um, and sets out um, really the uh, the, the notion that uh, there is a wide range of, of communication that local governments do uh, with uh, the public and there is a wide range uh, that ranges 
primarily from informing them and educating them to um, inviting them to engage in the decision making process. Um, with respect to budget communications, as, as stated in this uh, in this report, um, I think what it really comes down to is um, educating and informing the public about um, what that budget looks like, uh, what the proposed budget looks like, uh, both uh, in terms of operational dollars and in terms of uh, any other significant items, such as in this case um, this year the infrastructure levy of 10%. Um, and it, it's, it really comes down to council uh, making those decisions and uh, doing what council uh, thinks is best for the municipality at that point in time. Um, sometimes those decisions are not popular um, and sometimes, sometimes they are. Sometimes councils go out of their way to bring in 0% increases and um, and uh, I don't want to get into a discussion about the the efficacy of zero percent increases uh, in municipal budgets, but um, probably not not a great idea in my opinion. But in any event, um, councils ha are are elected to make the the tough decisions, and budget time is is notoriously the the tough decision time. Um, and while it's always necessary for elected officials to um, have their ears open and to listen um, to their <coughs> residents and um, electors uh, in respect of all matters, but in particular uh, budget matters. Um, nonetheless, um, it, it's council's duty to to make the decisions that they think are best, regardless of public opinion about uh, any proposed budget that is uh, put forward for adoption. And, and that's more or less what this report is about. Um, um, staff is cognizant of the fact that um, there's always room for improvement, um, and we will certainly look at ways that we can improve our communications going forward uh, in future budget processes and uh, perhaps with uh, a little more advanced planning time and, and <coughs> foresight uh, we, we may find other ways to communicate with the public about uh, the budget process and provide further opportunities for the public to comment um, on those future budget processes. Um, so that's, um, I think, more or less what uh, what, what uh, staff's position is with respect to budget communications, and I'm certainly open to any questions from any council. Good. If I can start on that one, and in light of my initial comments, so if there's going to be any discussion, uh, the preference would be that there's not a re repetition of the minutes of April the 2nd all over again. Uh, I think... Um, second, we've got it, and we've got what the uh, CAO has. My own thinking here is that it succinctly puts the, the issue before us. Uh, I'm thinking that um, that we put a note in the corporate calendar, perhaps, to think about how we might start doing this. Uh, I don't know how staff feels about that, or having council. Uh, council involvement early on. CAO, what's your thoughts on that? I think that as we uh, move forward um, in the fall with uh, looking at uh, things in, in more <coughs> detail, particularly in terms of, um, of our asset management plan and our financial planning uh, that we're going to embark upon for the next budget cycle in the fall, that um, that will be the time that we can certainly look at um, different options. Um, I don't know that it needs to be okay. in a calendar, but that's the time frame that, that so, I would have in mind in terms of making uh, substantive um, uh, efforts to see what else okay. we might look I'm, at. I'm fine with that. That's trigger enough for me. Uh, Councillor, uh, my discussion over Councillor Barmere. Um, so just to 
refresh my memory, the view is really the, the most effective way to get a message out. Is that what we're saying? That it's and, and as well as um, utilizing the resources that we have on our website. I mean, we, we spent we spent a good deal of effort creating the website yeah. that we have, which is just fair enough. Mega tons better than the last one. But if we were to write a short article, like we're writing articles now, right? If mm -hmm. we were to have a little education campaign on the budget and things that we need to think about and spend every three months writing an article in the view specifically on that sort of issue to educate. Mm -hmm. so that's something we could maybe yeah, well, and another important aspect of communicating about the budget and the rationale for why it is what it is or, you know, what what projects are being advanced within the budget and what's what's included is the the communication piece that goes out with the tax notices this summer. So um, that's always an informative piece and, and a good opportunity to um, have direct communication with residents about uh, what we're doing on that front, um, you know, every one of them gets it in their mailbox. So um, that's a that's a good piece. And then, you know, if we're following up with uh, an earlier start in the fall to the next budget cycle, then it could be a you know maybe the first person to write about that in October, you know, has a maybe touches base on on what was in the the tax notice stuff about. The stuff that we're doing, where we're at now, what we're, what we're about to embark upon, um, I don't know, just things that are coming to mind. I think for me, I too, I, uh, and, this, um, and this came out at our, our last council meeting, I think that I would explore alternate, uh, although I believe the village update is our primary vehicle, but I think there are alternate vehicles and the use of those should be explored too. Councillor Abbott, any comment? Sure. Well, I can make mine rather brief. Um, I agree with Ron, alternate, or sorry, Mayor. Uh, maybe not a survey, but a questionnaire in everyone's mailbox saying when it comes to important issues, how would we best communicate to you? Do you want it dropped in your mailbox? Is the village update good enough for you? Are you getting your information from the website? And just that way, if we have a certain percentage of the village or we know who those residents are when it comes to important issues, we communicate directly with them that way. And that we're not having this discussion every time there's a, an important issue that arises. I, I couldn't agree more with the exploration of alternate <coughs> methods. Uh, and I think that's probably the October period is the time to do that, which is very early in the budget cycle. So lots of time to get it done. Councillor Abbott, you've had your drink of water. You're ready to go? Here you go, and I'm going to do my very best not to repeat anything. Cut me off if I do. No, that won't happen, but I'll be looking at you. <laughs> um, I just genuinely on the support, I do appreciate the, the can do better um, approach, which I think is very positive and obviously we're all going to focus on. Um, the second sentence of the second paragraph. Can you reduce this a minute ago? You mentioned the 10% levy. This whole discussion comes around the 10% levy. It was not about the rest of the budget. The 10% levy was only introduced on March 19th. The whole argument I've had about more communication is only about the levy. So it's not really true that that, which has triggered all of this, has been around for six meetings. It's been two meetings. Okay. Um, I was asked, I wrote a, asked to write a, was asked to, I wrote a, yes, I was asked to, sorry, and I wrote a village update piece about communication in January, whenever it was. Um, I shared that strategy with the CEO, but no one else had five goals that I sent to the CEO, maybe sure you could catch them. Um, it was just an email. Um, through some of the discussion last week, I've now read our electronics communication policy and realized that I should not have done that. I'll send it to the CIO, I have to send it to all the rest of council. So, um, I too am educating myself on that policy, and there's a few other things in there I think all of us should do, because none of us are following that policy. Um, I was planning to do another April 26 village update, and it was going to be on communications piece, <coughs> what we managed to improve, the numbers have gone up. 
um, not solely due to that, but we, in that we published the numbers, we invited people to touch, go, go to the village update, sign up, and we've, we've made progress in all of those things. <coughs> so I was going to do an update on that. Um, and this was always the plan that I was trying to get to, was building some momentum of communication and keeping the, the communication code flowing. It wasn't meant to be a one-off piece of that work, that's my thing. And maybe other than what I shared with, with, with Peter and staff, Maybe others didn't realize it. I don't know. But that was what was what I had in mind. I'm prepared to not do this one on April 26th if we need to first share my thoughts and get everyone on board with the same thing. But one of the things, for example, was meant to be that letterbox that says, have your say, and I put certain wording on it. Peter wanted to change. Peter changed it. Sorry, the CIO changed it. Maybe I didn't explain to everyone. It was meant to be an open communication. Drop us a comment anytime you like. That was what we were trying to get to. It wasn't meant to be a one-off thing. And I think the, the picture of it taped up with masking tape in the store and I just sent the big <coughs> message. So, I'm going, to, I'm going to stop there, but what I suggest is after this meeting, I'll share that original email that I sent to Peter, and we will comment on it. And if we can't get something that everyone's happy around communication, I'm still happy to do the bulk of the work. Um, by the 26th, and maybe I don't do that on the 26th. Because um, there seems to be, if there's meant to be another plan around communication, I don't know what I was trying to achieve. <coughs> I want to say one thing. Yeah? Because I, I, I noticed a really big difference between last, my last term, which was just one year, and this new term, which has only been a few months. And the level of engagement that we're being asked uh, uh, in terms of writing articles for the is new. That's a new feeling, and I appreciate it because to me that is lending a voice. I get to have a voice now and say things in the view that I didn't have uh, during the last term. So to me that's a cultural shift in terms of communication. Mm -hmm. So I'm already seeing um, an improvement, and I'm not in any way trying to um, <coughs> uh, dissuade you from, from promoting it even further, but I'm just saying there already has been a cultural shift. So I'm not sure if that's coming directly from Ron or where that's coming from, Councillor, uh, uh, Mayor, pardon me. Um, but it's definitely a big shift. I mean, I think... For, for clarity, you can call me anything you like. Right. But I'm <laughs> pardon me. But, you know, in fact, I felt a lot of pressure to write that first article, but it also felt kind of liberating because I had a voice, right? And I think that that's important for all of us as councillors to recognize that that is now an opportunity that we have to bring the issues that we care about into the public in a way that people can digest. So if it's something that we introduce at a meeting, people aren't going to read through the minutes or they're not going to listen to the audio. Now we have an opportunity to highlight that in our view articles, right? So I appreciate that. And I think that's going in the right direction in terms of communication. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barmer. I, um, it, it's something I, uh, I encourage all of you to do. Um, and I think that, as I've said, if the mayor's the mayor is going to deliver any of the bad news to the village, so that gives you guys a lot of open ice. And there's a lot of topics, and um, I'm very pleased with the way everybody is engaged with the community. And as you can see, I actually make the village update part of my, part of my every agenda. It seems like so um, I'm pleased with what everybody does. I think for Councillor Abbott and this stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not trying to broker a, any, anything here, but it's a short week um, and staff's away on Monday, so I'm not sure how much time uh, the CAOs are going to get to iron out whatever it is that you want to dress up and bring to council for, for this. So uh, if you have an alternate topic, um, you could pursue that. Uh, it's you and the CEO, do you want what do you want? Where do you want to go? Uh, uh, just to clarify, in terms of what you want to bring for the April 26th, just communication, a theme of communication? Yes. Yeah. It was only really a follow up to the, the previous one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't have any issues with that. The only, the only issue that, um, you know, that I, that I had <coughs> with respect to, um, methodology of communication is the letterbox. Having it be uh, a wide open suggestion box uh, living in the store without any kind of process or 
um, uh, tailoring of, of uh, how two-way communication is to take place. And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, uh, I'm not sure that it's an effective means of communication because, for example, of the 70, 75, whatever the number of paper copies that we got in respect of the wood burning uh, survey, um, only 25 or 26 of them were in the front, in, from the letterbox. Um, so over 50 were from, or about 50, were from people bringing in them into the village office or putting them through the letter slot of the village office or coming into the office and filling it out in the office. Um, the vast majority uh, of responses was via the electronic survey on the website. And that is always going to be the most efficient and effective method for receiving that kind of information from the public. Um, so I, I have some, you know, I just have a, a number of different issues with the letterbox being um, out there. Uh, we have opportunities for people to email all of council. We have opportunities for people to click on the feedback form on the website if they just want to freestyle some kind of a comment. Uh, we get those all the time. More often than not, they deal with matters that uh, staff need to attend to or they're handed off to public works to take care of something or for finance to look into. Once in a while there are things that uh, end up being a topic that comes to council. Sometimes when council specifically requests feedback regarding a particular matter, um, you know, a particular topic, then and, and, and people are invited to um, use that uh, response methodology then we collect all that feedback and we report back to council on what, what people had to say about that topic. Um, so those are already proven methodologies that work um, and that people do use. I think that we can, you know, now that we've kind of had the experience of setting up the survey on the website and, and realizing the capabilities that it has on our website, um, I think we could probably do a bit more in the way of surveying uh, on different topics, um, but I'm, as you can tell, very hesitant about having a, uh, an open suggestion box that um, creates a number of issues in terms of um, workload for staff, um, what to do with the information, sorting the information, uh, reporting to council on it. Um, I think that there's better and more efficient and more effective methodologies for doing that. So other than that, by all means, I, I, I think it's wonderful that, um, that uh, you're reaching out, Councillor Abbott, and inviting people to um, communicate, to have their say, um, and uh, I don't have any issues whatsoever with that. So on those, on the email I sent you with the five goals, the fifth goal was create no more work for staff or something along that line. Maybe it was the fourth call. Anyway, it was in my email. I was very intent on not making any more work. The letterbox, the original word in the letterbox was meant to be for council feedback. My idea was if someone wanted to drop a message to council, and that's why I thought I was going to get to keep a key, they could put it in there. Um, and I don't mind opening them if they're abusive, burning them, and if not, share them with the rest of the council and staff. Yes. I don't mind if, but if it says that it's for council, not for village matters, if it's got something to do with the village, um, I guess we'll pass it on. But I was, the intention was not to create more work. Yeah. It's, you know, that kind of thing would be an operational thing that staff yeah. ought to look after. It shouldn't really be something that council is uh, attending to directly and um, it just and the only idea for it was, that, and I know it's a small portion, it's a small portion of the community that actually don't have email. And they have to pass by the office in order to get to the store, so they can easily okay. drop something off at the office or through the letterbox. There's a, there's a little thing that catches stuff on the inside, so it's just as easy to, to drop it at the office, as, as we found, like two to one. All right. By a score of two to one in terms of the letterbox versus the office, that's where people 
All right, go up so far. I'm going to call the time on the topic here. Uh, Councillor Abbott, I think you should write on the communication piece for the 26th. I think I'm I'm not fettering you on any topic. I'm not fettering any councillor what they want to write, but I applaud you for doing it. I applaud where you're going. I think uh, CAO De Young is the ultimate editor for you, so there's your... However it goes out to press, that is the way it is. Uh, I would, as a suggestion though, uh, and this is for you to talk to staff, how you frame your, your meeting is that our probably number one or number two mailing day of the year is the tax notice that comes out. Uh, maybe there's something in there along the lines of where Councillor Cunliffe was going that if you prefer not to be on, please mail this in. Uh, if you want to be on the village update, please send this in or something like that. I mean, it's a one time where every every resident in the community is touched. And so we can put some strength on them, other than you and I banging on every door in the community, which I'm quite prepared to do as a drop back. But uh, I'm going to leave you with that, my thought on that one. So I think uh, uh, I will give everybody one last second on this one. I said I wouldn't, but I'm going to. Uh, my view is that Councillor Abbott and CEO Dion work out whatever, whatever the article comes out as. I'm fine. Any other councillors? Councillor Cunliffe, you're good. I'm Councillor Farmer, you're good. With the uh, open communication. Yeah, and I just because I can't always find the village update ones. Can you send me your article again, the communication one? Would that be okay? Sure. Sure. I think we could all act. I could send it to everybody again. Beats the digging. And I will copy everyone the original email I sent to Peter and now that I've read the communications policy. I think, I, well, let's, 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 I think on the communications policy, I mean, there's time when you want to, I, I can almost feel a claw in my right hand here. There's times when you want to communicate with the CAO directly, and that's fine. I think on the communication piece, the biggest one is if you see that three of us get uh, copied on something and nobody else is sending it into the, into the pool, make sure it gets in. That's... It's sometimes we all get so many emails. We just that's that's the one guy. So three C we all see. All right. So uh, last call on this one then. Uh, so the issue on this uh, budget communication principle is that the information report budget communication principle will be received. Motion second. All in favor? Done. Thank you. Thank you very much. For that. Uh, which brings me uh, to Public Works Week, which I stumbled upon when I looked in the corporate calendar, and the uh, there it is. We celebrate that every year. Um, it's always the week after the week after the Victoria Day holiday. How do and we, we celebrate it? Um, the staff, the staff here, hold a barbecue for Public Works staff on Wednesday when the office Pretty is closed. Pretty nice gig. To celebrate our wonderful Public Works staff. And we make them bring the barbecue and cook the hamburgers. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> well, that's well just, they just take over. You yeah. know? We, we buy the food and everything, and <laughs> but they actually cook the hamburgers. <laughs> We've done it for about, well, actually, since I've been here, mm -hmm. um, four years. Yeah, it's quite a nice, we just quietly celebrate them. And so it seems the preferred way they want to do it. They're not. Yeah, I was going to say, cook food. Do we get a All right. I, 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 uh, sure, you do. <laughs> I see the uh, staff um, quite a lot, and I see a lot of smiles on people's faces, so I'm, I'm glad. Good. All right. Just saw it in the corporate calendar, and I thought, okay. There we go. Anything else you want to add on that, CFO? All good? Public Works Manager, is there anything you'd like to add? No, not at all. It's a, a well-liked event by the staff. What a surprise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, very good. Uh, okay, next up is uh, be the mayor stuff. Uh, quick thing, verbal is that uh, one of the executive from the events committee met, uh, CFO Rook and I, a uh, wide range of topics, tax receipts, and the village involvement and assistance, and we're going to be see, seeing some of that in a resolution that appears shortly. Uh, if you don't have their ticket, get it. It's going to go. Uh, any questions on that? Nope. 
Good. The next one is the glass notice board, which I can't remember if we talked about this last time, but this is the the board that is the uh, it has a, some odds and sods at the um, to the left hand side as you're facing the mail room as you're going towards the door. Uh, blue painted two by four raised case and so. Uh, the Strata Council via their president. Uh, we said I said we were interested, and I think if I, from memory, which isn't very good, said I don't think it would take much for us to pretty it up, uh, and and I kind of saw it as kind of uh, a vehicle to do something as for Councillor Kenlis volunteer thing, and it's probably blow up the thing or whatever we decide to do. Anyhow, it was a work in progress for me. So uh, I'm going to, before I give you over to um, the CAO for his thoughts on this one, uh, the president of the strata committee, their three points were, how do you see it working? Would it be prettied up? And my personal favorite, monthly license fee. <laughs> they didn't state it in the mouth, did they? I know, but... Uh, I mean, thinking out loud and uh, a monthly license fee, uh, I could see if we decide we were going to do that and we picked some nominal number and gave them a five-year advance payment, that might make it a less than nominal number, but still nominal. Okay. Anything to add? Um, Other than, than your opposition. <laughs> I've expressed my thoughts before. That okay. I think Thank you. Most, uh, Thank you. All right. So, uh, in brief, let me editorialize for you. It is a duplication. And there is some draw on staff's time to do this if well, we haven't worked out that detail. So, I guess on this one, I look at our counselors. This was a counselor, it was me driven. Uh, whether this is something uh, my council colleagues would like me to uh, pursue with them. How do I see it working? We're going to put it occasionally. We're going to put things in. We're not going to duplicate what's already in the in the board. I see it that there's enough events going on, off and on, whether it's trivia night or who knows what, or saplings or stuff like that. Uh, would it be pretty dip? I'm going to guess you know Windex and removing some of the stuff would probably suffice. I don't see it being lit because I think we'd have to punch in. So it's either okay, we're all there. Uh, before we get to the topic of monthly license fee, everybody, this is a chance either this is a bad idea and I'll drop it and I'll say thanks but no, or would you like me to pursue it further? Yes. So when you said saplings, that made me think, oh, okay, well, that's a business. So yes, we have a partnering agreement with them to provide assistance by advertising anything in the village update that they'd like to advertise. This is technically covered. And I'm sure you could amend the agreement if you want to amend the agreement. That's not the point. The point is that you need to have a policy about what could be in there and what couldn't. Um, just just mm -hmm. alerted me, just red flag, you know, make sure that you have a policy. If you're going to do this, yeah. you need to have a policy about who can be in there. Because otherwise every business would be saying, well, I want to be in there too. And yeah, the, the uh, beverage, alcoholic beverage provider for the village, I'm sure they'd be first up. Okay. Thank you, uh, and I'm not inviting you to offer your time just yet. Uh, council members, speak up, or we'll let this one go. Um, I, when we spoke about it last time, I wasn't envisaging it for what you've just suggested, um, which maybe makes it a little different. How so, did you see it? Well, I kind of thought it was duplication of official council. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not an easy stuff. Uh, and I agree with Peter back there here, you walk in the door, you see the other one, why do it? But stuff that we don't allow to be up there, like events committee publications and, and that kind of stuff, if that's what we want to use it for, that, that's different. Um, then I think it does maybe have a use. I'm spitballing here. Yeah, but I think from that, if that's the kind of thing we're going to say, so you're not allowed to be on, you can't be in the store anywhere else, in the post office anywhere else. But you could be here if you are in policy and agreement, if you are if you have a partner agreement with the village or you're as uh, a committee that we support or works to that effect. I, I kinda now that I, I I don't think we want to compete with the back of the mail 
area and we want to make it uh, no work for staff seems to be the two criteria. So I mean, if we're saying saplings or go to the school is something we support, the school we support, maybe there's an event they want to promote and I don't know what that is, uh, volunteer event, uh, smile at your public works person type thing, it's their week or something like that or um, a trivia night or other stuff like that. Um, so I kind of see it as uh, that kind of thing, trying not to compete with our the village update, or just reprinting it, which is competing. What did you, what do you mean when you see the back of the mail area? In the mail room at the Outside. back wall. Hold on. No, no, still there. Yeah, it's kind of a four by six foot space, blue Lions Bay. Community. Can the door directly in? Big uh, area with uh, lots of information. No, I was just about there. <laughs> they put a whole bunch of new boxes there. The room's completely clear. There's nothing. There's mm -hmm. no one thing posted about on the walls. There. On the left, but what about the boxes? It's got the agenda. It's, it's got the, the minutes. Oh, it's okay. got. So well, that all that stuff on the left is gone. That's oh, yeah, the that's the right hand side. As soon as you walk. Very end of the room. Got it. It's actually our official and, process where we require and, to the agenda, and that's one you know, of the spots we required. And it would be where the <laughs> copies of the village update are. Okay. You gotta stop. You gotta stop going there at midnight. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so back to this. Um, There's a picture of you there, no? Let's focus. In theory, I am totally in favor of it outside of finding out just what the agreement would be for the leasing of it. I would like more information on the expectations. All right, so I'll play with that maybe. piece. But I, I mean, I think I understand where council feels on this, so trust me on that one. Uh, anything else? I, don't, I think we're on the same flavor with this one. So if I can work this out with the strata, then uh, say maybe, but I have to come back to the CAO because I value his time, and maybe there'll be a simple policy that you can kind of dictate while you're driving okay, back and forth. <laughs> I didn't have one yes, in too much detail. It's currently used for a lot of different events, so it would have to be a communication, and then like, I guess all those people would then have to come into the village office if they wanted to post something, and then we would determine whether or not it could be posted, and yep. then we would post it. Like they advertise a lot um, events in West Van, so it'd have to be some sort of, I don't know how they put that stuff in I, there I, now, so there'd there, have to be a communication, is, they can no longer do that. There's a variety of things that most of us here probably have never <coughs> thought about going to or would touch the website that's being referred to. No, I just meant that it's an expectation yes. that there's currently people who use that, so we would have to let them know they can no longer use it. Because it doesn't nice. fit. Well, the well I see it I see this our notice yeah. board, not theirs. So there we go. As long as the strata realizes that you're talking about exclusive use, not yeah. not exclusive. Thank you for that reminder. I just meant okay. to stop we're time gonna, if we're suddenly close. we have all these people coming to the front desk asking right. to put stuff we're in going to telling close, them they can't. We're gonna close this topic mm -hmm. now. I uh, Sometimes ideas just aren't. Okay, enough of that. We're leaving it with me. Uh, the next one is the village up. Uh, I'm suggesting, uh, for a show of hands, that we might want to do an op ed in the village update on septic systems. You're in, done. Um, and there's, there's, there's a person, let's call him Mr. Poop. That is also uh, ready to assist. Awesome. Okay, so thank you, and that's for a date to be named. Thank you. I could find a good code name for you too, Councilor Um I on the village update again, which was under the subject of wood, and I was wondering, Councilor Abbott, if I can pencil you in for October for round two of this. Oh, okay, sure. Okay, and sure. since I just happen to have my calendar here. Is that for the what to burn and the clean burning we've talked about? Um, yeah. How about, how about uh, for Friday, October the 11th, which is also the Stikine River Provincial Park was established in 1996 that day. Okay, Councillor Abbott, you are on for wood. Thank you. And, uh, next up was 
uh, LGMA Exchange Magazine, which uh, I'm not. I, Peter gets these. Um, does everybody else get one of these? Uh, welcome to give it to you. I noticed a couple of months ago, this comes up quarterly that um, and more. It's on the back page. Is uh, it's a community member community page, so we're all part of LGMA. And this particular quarter, it's Fruitvale. They're celebrating their um, hundred something or other in the summer. But, and this is the surprise, I have us on the page for the winter edition. And, surprise, surprise, Nancy says, hi, Peter. Nancy Taylor, who's the executive director. She was going to write you, but I said, no, no, let me just break the news to her. So this goes along the lines of our, um, our uh, media session where we define who we are and we can use this going forward and for other stuff. Sorry for that surprise. Uh, actually, to quote, she said, good morning, Mayor McLaughlin. Thank you for calling this morning. We'd be happy to profile Lions Bay in our town section for the winter exchange. I'll connect with Peter later in the fall to set up the word count and deadlines. Here's a link to our past magazines. And there you go, Peter surprised him. There we go. Thank you. Oh, and as I was looking at the back page, I also looked at the uh, front page. Who would be the editor of this magazine? Fun fact, Therese Nicholson. Aha, there you go. All right. And that concludes the Mayor's Report. Council, members, anything? There being none, committees, none, emergency services, none, resolutions. <coughs> Boing. The background to this is on page 55 of 104. And that is as a result of um, uh, the CFO's and my, my meeting with the events committee. So the motion before us is the council relaxed the noise bylaw and the traffic and parking bylaw to allow live music until 11.30 at 140 Lions Bay Avenue on Thursday, June 27th, 2019, to, comma, to allow angle parking on Lions Bay Avenue, excluding cul-de-sacs, no parking areas, and fire hydrants, and to waive guest parking passes for visitors during this time for the events committee's beach parking fundraising events. I have a motion on that. Thank you, Councilor Kimmel. With a second, any discussion? Just Councilor one, Abbott. Just one question on the, on the parking permits. Um, so I asked this question last week. We had some uh, event in our neighborhood and, and I was instructed to come to the village office and pick up a bunch of permits, which they gave me. Lately, you know, I went off with a whole bunch of permits and gave them out and put them on the dashboards. Is that not the way we should be doing it rather than just not having permits for the night? I particularly care one way or the other, but I was just wondering what is the standard policy? Uh, verbally, if CFO Rook could confirm, I think the events committee executive asked that we just waive it in a specialty thing to make it easy for them and that there'll be folks with Lions Bay stickers on it and then other guests that don't. And but for the evening in question, but between those times, it'd just be waived. I would tend to agree with making less work for a volunteer committee to ensure mm -hmm. that every ticketed guest has a parking permit. That's adding a whole bunch more stuff that someone's got to do, and they're just trying to do something good for us. So I agree with waiving it. I think if it was a Friday night, maybe there'd be something to talk about, but it could be the Thursday night. I think that's the best methodology. There's no bylaw enforcement officer out that evening in any event. Are you fine with that, Councilor Abbott? Sure. Good. Uh, any more discussion? Call a motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And CFO Brook, will you pass that on to the committee? Yes. Thank you very much. A set resolution. Oh, okay, uh, the next one was. What the next one, if there's any uh, discussion required, um, 
that needs to be enclosed, then we would move to close for that discussion. But um, if not, then um, and the purpose of uh, of setting this out as a four-year term was so that um, uh, we wouldn't have to do it every spring. Um, for the foreseeable future, the idea is that Mr. Dennison would um, be our official liaison with Department of Fisheries and Oceans um, with respect to the ongoing uh, glass sponge reefs and, and other um, uh, ocean environment um, issues that uh, he deals with them on. Um, and that would simplify things in terms of t essentially taking it to the next council to either renew or whether it still needs to be ongoing at that point would be, and it could be canceled if, if it becomes moot at any point in time. So. Do we get a report or anything? Mm -hmm. We haven't to date, but um, I think he did China, did you hmm. mention something in his email about reporting back or something? I, find it, I think he did, didn't he? Well, if anything came up. Yeah, if anything, basically, if there was any any new information or... We um, that we need to know about. And we could perhaps even, you know, we could we could request that, you know, once, at least once a year, and yeah, if not, just, maybe twice. Just, you know, half, you know, just, a just to come and give us a talk and tell us what, uh, what, what he's up to and what's going on. And, and then... If there was a need, he could let us know something to mm -hmm. come and tell us about, but that's probably a good idea. We could add that in. Okay. So the motion is appointment of department of <coughs> appointment of Department of Fisheries and Oceans representative. The council reappoint Glenn Dennison as the Village of Lions Bay's liaison to the Department of Fisheries and Oceans for a four-year term. And request that he provide an annual uh, report on activities. Good. I have to a motion. Hmm? To cancel. Se okay. Yes. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And if staff could apprise Glenn of that, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Bylaws, who doesn't love a bylaw? See if I work. So this is the um, five-year financial plan bylaw to be read a third time. There were some changes made to the bylaw, so I wanted to highlight them in yellow. It was actually good news. We, I had put in kind of an estimate of what I thought we were getting for the gas tax funding, but in the federal budget, it was announced there would be an increase, but we weren't sure how who was getting the increase. So we found out after we had read it uh, for the first and second time, and uh, we are getting a one-time increase in the gas tax of $59,000. So it's basically double what we normally get. Plus they um, gave us a five-year schedule of what we we're getting for the next five years. So I've basically gone into the um, budget and I've added it into the grant revenue. And then I have increased the transfer to reserves because all the gas tax fund money we get is transferred, it has to be transferred to a restricted reserve. And then that money can be used for future infrastructure purchases. So um, this year we have about $225,000 in there and we'll get another 100000 in 2019. So that was the change to the budget. It, it's funny, it infected quite a few things. And Schedule B, I'm required to show for the community charter the percentage of revenue we get from each source. So of course, by increasing the grant revenue, it changed a lot of the percentages. But basically, the only change made was I have increased the grant revenue for the increased gas tax revenue, and I've increased the transfer to the reserve. And everything else is unchanged in the bylaw. Good, uh, we'll do this backwards. We'll go to discussion before uh, we go to the motion. Uh, I have a question that's not financial. Uh, is there a reason why we can't do fourth reading tonight on this? Yeah. Yes. You can't. You can't, you can't adopt on the same day as you give third reading. You have to wait at least 24 hours. There's only a couple things, a couple bylaws where you don't have to, and that's OCP and zoning, for example. Thank you. Okay. All right, can I ask uh, so the recommendation is that the 2019 2023 five year financial plan bylaw number 560 2019 be read a third time? Can I have a motion? 
Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Um, I've got just a question for you to help educate myself. The municipal, Mississippi, right, the borrowing of the 380,000 for, for trucks. When did we do that? Uh, we did that in January of 2019. It was approved in the 2018 budget. It's just there was delay in um, us getting the trucks. Um, okay. So we were, there were five public works trucks. We they were supposed to arrive in 2018, didn't arrive to 2019. So I got approval for the MFA borrowing in 2018, but I didn't borrow it until I needed it. So we actually borrowed it in January. It's a five-year loan. Okay. And we did that instead of leasing the trucks. We had done um, the prior council. We had done an RFP um, for five public works trucks for leasing and for purchasing, and it was much better economically to purchase them, actually, than to lease them. Okay, right. so that was, <coughs> yeah, that was why I was a bit confused about that. Mm -hmm. So, but <coughs> we borrowed $380,000 and bought five trucks. Yes. Um, so what is the basis for forecasting from borrowing on that same line item through the next four years? That is, um, ties into, when I, uh, if you remember this schedule that um, basically the future capital was based on our borrowing by of the $3 million. Uh -huh. And when we had gone to the public, we had, so this is the whole assumption I've had to make for the five-year plan, and this will probably be the last year we do it this way, is um, I just assumed we'd, the grants would still be coming, even though... Yeah. Doesn't look like they may be. Sorry, just... So it's it nets to zero. So basically, I have yeah. grant revenue, I have proceeds from borrowing, and I have the capital, and it nets to zero. I understand yeah. now. Just uh, what, on that same line yeah. item, one the first one was the trucks. I'm thinking we buy another five next year. What's going? Yeah. And now you've explained it's, they're not they're yeah. not related. They just it's have to be the same line basically I'm anticipating that grants will continue yeah. to come, and we have the authority to borrow yeah. to um, get those, and then it's got the capital, but yeah. it yeah. may not happen. It's not, it's not more trucks. That's all. No, no. <laughs> Five was enough. Um, and then two other questions on, on page 62. Um, what are the recreation and utilities? What are those? Um, it's very, very minor. It's part of was. the marina is zoned recreation. That's the one you're talking about. Yeah. All right, answer down this time. Yeah. So you say, like, it, it's... The percentages, it, it, they're so small that even get, I have trouble even getting to add to 100 <laughs> okay. without going to three decimal places. I think I asked that last time you told me to Well done. Councillor Roberts? Yeah. You're good, thank you. Uh, then, uh, do I just reference the bylaws? CAO or do I read the whole thing? Just one line that you can. Just one well, you line. Already, you, already, you, know, you already read the uh, had the motion. Okay. So it's been it's been motioned and seconded. Good. No more discussion. Call a motion. All in favor. Good. Thank you. Unanimous on that. Yeah. Next up. Yeah. Oh. Um, before, anyone, before anyone tells me you know, what I'm doing, I'm going to abstain. I know that's a yes vote. But the reason I'm abstaining is because I still have an issue with the, the temp syntax and how the communication happens. So I understand my abstention is a yes vote. That's what I thought of this last time. Um, but I just want to record that I was unhappy with the, the way the 10% levy was added short, short of communication. And thank you, and I apologize for uh, just. Uh, I need to, to actually look, but I think that under our procedure bylaw, an abstention doesn't get recorded. Only an opposition gets recorded in the okay. minutes. Uh, uh, do you know what I'm paying, Paul? I'll still abstain anyway. I'll still abstain if you go work it out afterwards. <laughs> if it's a silent, if it's a silent abstention, <laughs>
Oh, I love it. Why, where do you have the, the, the little cartridges? Or you? Any, any, any store. Any one yeah. store? Yeah. Staples. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I went to school in Germany and we got a lot to write with this. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. I like them. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it's that's why I'm saying that uh, you know legally it, it becomes a, a yes vote. Um, so hence there's no notation in the minutes that you know you either have uh, a, a, a vote in favor, which it equates to, or you have a vote against, and it's not a vote against. So um, just realize that you have on on the tape recording that, that you have professed yeah. to abstain, but the minutes will not show anything other than uh, motion seconded and carried it in the minutes. Yeah. Won't say one abstention and it won't say unanimous. Pardon me? It said, won't say one abstention and it won't say unanimous, it will just say carried. It will just say carried, that's correct. Okay, well, I'm doing something new. Okay. Okay, so if you're... Satisfied or not? Councillor Rook? Sure. Okay, thank you. Moving along, CFO Rook. This is our tax rate bylaw. Um, normally, we coincide with the, um, the five year plan, and when we do first and second reading, then we do first and second reading of the tax rate bylaw, but we're a little ahead of schedule with this, just a few days, and we have to wait until we get the final revised rule from BC Assessment but we're, before we can do the um, tax rate bylaw. And essentially what it does, it takes the budget and the um, rates that have been agreed to by council and converts them into a mill rate. And this is, the mill rate is what we actually need to um, calculate our taxes. So it's here for first, second, and third reading, so it could catch up to the bylaw. But it always has to be adopted after the, um, the budget bylaw, because basically you adopt the budget, and then that feeds into what the tax rate bylaw says. Good. All right. Uh, so the recommendation, which is motion, is that the tax, tax rates bylaw number 561-29 be read a first, second, and third time. Can I have a motion? Thank you. Second, any discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor of first reading? No, it's first, second, and third is the motion. All in one shot? Yep. All in favor of first, second, and third reading? Unanimous. Thank you. Which brings us to correspondence. And uh, Councillor Bain's absence. I will take this since I uh, had done my scribbles on this. But even though he is not here, we heartily thank Councillor Bain for completion of his three month term on correspondence, which, drum roll please, brings up Councillor Barmayer for the next three months. And just, I hadn't thought of this when I did this originally, rather than the mayor subbing, we will go forward with the substitute. So that will be Councillor Cunliffe that'll be subbing for you, who ironically gets a month off when we're away in August. Anyhow, so there you go. So should you be away, it'll be Councillor Cunliffe that does the correspondence. Is it calendar months? We get a short one. <laughs> well, not a <laughs> break. Some people aren't here all the time. Okay, let's get. To, okay, let's dance on this one. Okay, so the incoming correspondence, which is the general correspondence, which is G1, G2, G3, my recommendation on updating on human trafficking, UBCM provincial response to our resolution, and the ECOM board of directors designate is all no response. No, oh, sorry. I think uh, the ECOM matter requires that council designate someone to vote uh, the village's share at the ECOM annual general meeting 
and you could, if you, you know, uh, let it be yourself or it could be a counselor and someone who's going, if none of council intend to go to the AGM, you could uh, pass a motion to uh, essentially provide proxy to uh, Walton. Director, Walton, Director Walton, former Mayor Walton of District of North Vancouver, who is the, uh, who has been appointed as the representative of the North Shore communities to vote Lions Bay share if you instruct him uh, in accordance with how you want those votes to go. Not having seen what the agenda oh, is. Oh, having seen like. what the agenda is, <laughs> and I, but I trust in Mayor Walton. Mm -hmm. I, I will not be going. Something so, missing in the communications? Uh, this is on... So it's page four, part of... Page, uh, on the, it's page... Five in the highlighted red bottom. But what's page four? What is page four? Just information. Page well, Ron kind of lumped one, two, and three. Tried to lump one, two, and three together. Mm. One and two are two different matters. Okay. So page one, one, two, three, four. So page three and four is the province responding to the resolution that was passed at UBCM got it, got it. in favor of ASA, basically. And telling us that they're not going to do anything with it. Is that the end of that then? The For the time being. For the time being. So when UBCM looks at their number of topics that they do when they gather, that might hit the list, it might not. Okay, so back to the ECOM. So as uh, CEO Deong has said, we will do the motion which you so eloquently said was giving Director Walton the opportunity to vote on our behalf. That was the synthesis of it. Yeah, but okay. Lions, Lions Bay has a share. I forget if they're A shares or B shares. Uh, one, a, one, a. one A share. Okay, so yeah, that's what you would be authorizing him to vote. Uh, or you can not do anything and not vote on any items at the ECOM AGM. But I don't know, I, I haven't checked what their agenda is or what they're voting on. Um, so um, you might want to just cover your basis by um, designating uh, your vote to um, Director Walton. And um, if the instructions, I don't know, maybe, maybe this the, the most efficient way to do this would be um, to uh, direct Mayor McLaughlin to review the ECOM agenda with Director Walton and provide him with direction on voting for Lions Bay's 1A share um, on any matters that Sounds Lions Bay may be concerned about. Does that make sense? That sounds more responsible. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect, and I will. It's June twentieth. I got no promise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hustling through the next bunch is the resident correspondence, which is R one, Mr. Liu. That's a response from me, uh, Mr. Mackey. That was responded to as well. Yes. So, uh, no response on R1, no response on R2. Uh, R3, which is uh, Mr. Fisher. And my suggestion is that Councillor Abbott respond to him. Okay. Are you fine with that? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item R4, which is from uh, resident Monroe, which is the Tree, tree cutting or deforestation, station, okay. A school board property. Uh, I think that uh, from the photos and the claims, I think we get to the issue. CAO John, your thoughts? Uh, uh, Public Works Manager Baffer, do you have any further information on this? It, as, a, as I understand it, it, it's on school district land. Correct. that this occurred 
and but we were looking into whether or not school district had granted permission or not. They were unaware. I met with them okay. today. They were unaware. Uh, they did not believe that this was approved. Mm -hmm. uh, they will look into it and provide feedback. Okay. So it's coming. So this is just a resident decided to pull a little up there. Uh, allegedly. We don't know for sure. We'll find out. So in terms uh, of... I, sorry. Yep. I will add. So trees were not uh, cut down. All that happened was 12... All that happened. 12 trees were topped, and the debris was left on site. Oh, okay. So. This used to be quite a big tree in the it, it appears to be, via a photo, uh, what it looks like, but gar uh, yeah, staff checked it out, and it was just trees that were topped, not removed. Um, um, this one was moved two feet from the ground. It was topped about maybe 18 inches of the ground. This, this looks like a little bit of here. This one, huh? Yeah, I don't know if that's a full stump or just the way the photo looks, but... A chunk of tree. All I can attest to is what staff... How old is that tree? Top <laughs> right. Very effective. But we are looking into it. All right. Uh, so on this one for uh, resident Monroe then, can we ask staff... Uh, public Works Manager, Steve Nods, that would be you uh, respond to uh, Resident Monroe when you can. Uh, item number R5, which is from Mr. Waller, uh, and I think as you can see, he and I have met, and uh, I will respond to him if that's fine with Council. I take no hand up, meaning that's a yes. And uh, R6, resident Penny Nelson, and that's on page 29, and, um, and there we are. And I think that the pieces covered here are, have been covered by CAO Dijon in his report on communication. Uh, can I ask the CAO to respond to this resident? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, make a point on that. Um, I personally believe that council should respond when people address council, unless it's a technical issue. Um, and I know that Penny Nelson was hoping to get response from the council member she addressed and not the CAO. I can vouch for that. I'm fine with that. I'll respond to Ms. Nelson. We had a verbal chat, but I will put it more formally. Okay. Uh, were you thinking individually, Councillor Abbott, or one to I wasn't rest? thinking any more than I just said. Pardon? I'm not thinking any more than I just said. Okay. okay. Councillor Cunliffe, if you could respond on behalf of us. Thank you. And good point. Especially on this point, Councillor Abbott. Thank you. Um, R7, uh, this is a response. Um, it's a response to his, his point, as is number R8, Mr. Pavel. Uh, number 9, uh, resident O'Keefe, and she doesn't ask for a response, so I would propose no response. Unless there's any disagreement on that. <coughs> there being none, moving to the next one, which is uh, Messrs. Tobin and Wilton, and that's the absentee Councillor Bain who responded to them, so no response. And that concludes correspondence. Can I have a motion to receive the correspondence? Thank you, a second, and received. Which brings us to the tricky part of, oh, not quite, we're not there, but it's coming up quickly. Uh, new business, the uh, community science, community and school signage verbal updates. Is that us? Uh, Public Works Manager Jaffer and myself have been uh, going through 
the uh, signage um, that was uh, previously created and um, we uh, have I think settled on uh, signage that will uh, fit within our allocated budget uh, for this year um, and then there's going to be a couple of additional signs. It'll include signs, a couple of extra signs that um, um, John Dudley and Trailblazers have come up with in terms of information uh, about um, the different summits when you first head up the Lions Trail and Unnecessary Trail and so forth. Um, so we'll, uh, we're working towards getting that uh, happening. There is uh, one hitch before we do that in terms of the signage that's intended to go in front of the municipal hall uh, that have arrows to, you know, council chambers upstairs, Broughton Hall this way, office this way. Um, I think our, the intention to begin with was that that was going to be um, right beside the, the notice board that's out there. Um, but... Um, we paused uh, because uh, the memorial committee wants to have that cairn structure right in front of the flags and I think has a different idea about what <laughs> with there being no signs in front of that structure. So that presents a bit of a, a glitch uh, that we need to work through. So I, I was going to suggest to Councillor Bain that um, uh, he and uh, perhaps a couple of members of that committee meet with the public works manager and myself on site and talk about how that would work because we kind of need to have the signs as well. So um, once we get that settled, I think we're we're ready to move forward with arranging for production of the signage and um, and then getting it up when it comes. Right? Anything else to add, Mr. Jaffe? No. The school sign on the big sign thing on the highway? Is that? On the highway? Um, yeah, I sent uh, an email to the highway operations manager and requested that that empty spot on the sign be filled with a school a suitable school sign and uh, requested that uh, you get back to me with uh, options if there's more than one symbol. Uh, could go there, um, and my thinking was that whatever that ends up being, assuming that they say yes, uh, is what we would use for additional signage along the way to the school. Good. So. Thank you very much. Any questions? No more? That's very detailed. Thank you, Works Manager Jaffer and CAO Tijon. Okay, and then next up, Precise park link meter. So I am just handing around the card. I'm not expecting to read them all in a couple of minutes, but I'll tell you basically what it's all about. And uh, this is for uh, the parking meters. And uh, what it entails is. Um, what we're planning to do is use the meters that we used two years ago that functioned well and worked um, uh, without too many glitches, uh, as opposed to last year we used uh, cheaper meters and regretted it. Um, so we're expecting that things will go more smoothly this year. Um, and um, the term of the contract is from May 15th to September 15th, so it covers four months. Uh, they come out, they install the meters, at the end of the term they take them away. Um, the total costs are in the neighborhood of about $6,550 plus GST. And then if there's any on-site mis uh, miscellaneous services uh, that are required during the term, uh, there are hourly charges that apply. Um, and uh, our intent, uh, you'll see when we bring uh, an amendment to the fee bylaw, a proposed amendment to the fee bylaw next meeting, is to increase the rates for uh, the three parking lots. Um, 
at Sunset Parking area at the top um, by the trailhead, uh, that would go from $1.50 to $2 an hour, uh, for a maximum of $16 um, that someone would pay for a day of parking there, regardless of how many hours they're actually there. And they can buy a three-day ticket. Um, at uh, Kelvin Grove, the rate would go from $2 to $3, a maximum of $24. Uh, the most they can buy is one day at a time. Uh, and the hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. The park closes at 10 and cars are supposed to leave the parkade by 10 o'clock. Um, and then for Lions Bay Beach parking lot, uh, the rate would go uh, to $4 uh, from last year's $3, maximum $32. And then um, a little bit torn on whether we only allow for one day at a time parking or whether we allow for three days or whether we have um, some variation of that. And one thought that I had was to try to um, alleviate the, the, um, the parking demand on weekends to essentially not allow for multi-day parking on weekends. So. Um, you cannot buy, say, a three-day ticket on a Friday and go out on your boat for three days and come back and have your car sitting in the parking lot the whole time, eating up valuable parking space. I think the idea, I think it's important to have turnover on weekends uh, when we need it. Um, but during the week, um, if somebody wanted to do that on a Monday or a Tuesday, as long as they're out by Friday night, um, then I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. The only question um, that I'm looking into is um, with the company whether or not the meter can be programmed in that fashion. And then obviously uh, if council has any thoughts on that. Um, ultimately it's uh, the motion will be to um, authorize the CAO to John to sign the document that's on table on behalf of the village. So let's go in a different direction. Any questions, discussion first? Councilor Barman? There's a setup fee, is it a $600 setup fee per meter? Uh, 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 per, per meter is a one time setup fee of five hundred five to cover costs in the following delivery shipping software setup mm -hmm. program testing. Yep. Good. And we're, we have three meters or? Uh, yes, but that's that's the one-time setup fee of five ninety-five <coughs> is not per meter. The other ones, the other charges that you see on page, what's the third page, but under fees, uh, those are mostly per meter. Um, but that one, I believe, is just a, a blanket. Yeah. Delivery shipping software setup programming testing. Field testing. So, why do we take, put them up, take them down, put them up, take them down? <clears throat> yeah. So they don't go walking? I think we'd have to continue to pay the rent if yeah. we had them up there. Uh, all there the time. Yeah. 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 It's still better to do it this way than to be responsible for them for the year and uh, financially and um, from a security perspective as well. So this is much better. And do we send somebody to go and do the four hour free training or do we only pay somebody $120 an hour plus travel expenses? I'm presuming they charge even more because we're further away from us then. No, we're budgeting uh, for our two bylaw officers to go to go their to the that'll be their first day okay. uh, on the job in May, uh, on May 10th, subject to confirmation that that day will work for precise parking. Okay. They'll go to their Burnaby offices and uh, do the training okay. on the meters. Yeah. Excellent. Um, not so much about this uh, agreement, which is fine, that's the technical part of the business. Uh, will, I think they are, uh, is staff going to be doing a report uh, along the, below it's the end of spring and the bylaw officers are yep. going to be here and all this stuff? Yep. So that's yours and that'll come in the next it. month or so. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I will put forward the motion that uh, 
the CAO is authorized to sign the on-table agreement between uh, Precise Parklink Inc. and the Village of Williams Bay. That's the motion. Second. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Done. Okay, that ends new business. Public comments. And let's ask the ghost is up. Uh, nope. Sorry. Nope. Nope. sorry, just before we go move on past new business, it probably should have been somewhere else, but um, uh, at the beginning of the uh, agenda, probably should have remembered that Councillor Barmeyer was looking for an update on RV, RV tank. And, uh, well, it's, it's new business enough, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you want to provide that, Mr. Jaffer? We are working with AECOM to model the system uh, for extreme summer drought uh, and low water supply. Okay. Uh, and that will provide fire flow info to the fire chief so he and his staff can prepare um, a readiness plan in case there is a fire. We're also looking uh, at sourcing a tanker uh, that we could drive to and from different fire sites uh, and connect the, the engine. So it's under control. Yeah, the volunteer event was great. It was a lot of fun, a lot of talking, and lots of residents, you know, uh, you know I guess just a general social space, but that came up. That was mm -hmm. the question that came up. So I thought we would, anyway, I should ask. Yeah, it's a concern, and we're we're working with AECOM and the chief okay. on it. And unless things have changed since the last time I wrote, this is one of the topics to be covered by staff in the village update at a moment soon, and to be near you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. The other piece was uh, because it just you know because I live up on Ocean View, I see the changes in the water flow down through the ditch, and. Um, Two of my neighbors were just kind of curious about what's happening up at that Harvey and what So right now, so in the absence of the Harvey tank, the Ocean View tank will provide our reservoir for firefighting and for chlorine contact time. So potable water has to have a minimum time for chlorine to act on any <coughs> pathogens. So we're working with uh, Vancouver Coastal Health. Uh, to get their approval on the way we plan to implement this. Um, putting Ocean View online and commissioning it for potable water requires that we perform a, a, a very rigorous cleaning okay. and superchlorination of the tank to disinfect it before we put it uh, connect it to the potable water system. So that's what they're doing now, is they're flushing it? Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. So Ocean View will provide potable water for the portion of the village that used to get it from Harvey Tank during the winter. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And a much smaller tank, right? 300,000 gallons smaller. Yeah. Okay. And the rest of the, the reason why that should be okay is because the rest of the Harvey Tank is used for fire, firefighting. We only ever use the top couple of feet for Correct. potable water. Correct. Yes. Okay. So uh, the article will be out in the next um, five, six weeks when it gets warm. <coughs> yeah. Good. Thank you. If not sooner. If not sooner. All right. Any other questions for the public works manager on this one? Councilor Barmary? Sorry, one last question. When do they start the actual construction? Uh, demolition uh, will happen sometime after the long weekend. Uh, and it, Easter, Easter, long Easter long weekend? Easter long weekend. Dependent upon Vancouver Coastal Health approval of our operational plan and a couple of other contingencies that we're still working on. Okay. So the tanks in fabrication yet? Tanks in fabrication, yes. Including the drawings? Yeah. All right. And just curiosity thing, is there uh, advice in the update for this week that Trucks are coming and stuff like that? No? No. Okay. Right now it's just no. operationalizing Ocean View. That's fine. Okay. The upper Ocean View are 
smarter than your average bear. I'll figure what trucks mean. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, Councilor Barmer, you're happy with yeah, that? Happy. Good, thank yes. you. All right, uh, no more topics. Yeah, good, good, thank you. All right, uh, a couple of questions and comments, there being none. Uh, we come to the closed council portion of the meeting. So the proposed topics, I'm going to try my best on this one. But I've got last week's cheat sheet here too, so okay. Uh, uh, the proposed topics for discussion in the absence of the public are A, personnel, labor relations, B, crown charges, and on that matter that the council considers that disclosure of law enforcement matters could reasonably be expected to harm the conduct of an investigation under or enforcement of an enactment. That the meeting be closed to the public oh, on the so same... So that, so that where you pause and then... Where was the that's cheat the sheet motion. Here? That's the motion that's on the. Somebody needs to make the motion. Oh, you read the motion, so I guess the question is whether there's a second or. Ah, sorry. It's okay. I didn't read my own cheat sheet. Okay. Could I have a mover? Um, well, we're not going to disclose the information. Hmm? Sorry, looking at my cheat sheet from last week. So what you just read out is yeah. is. The motion that the somebody motion. needs to move. Thank you. And then second. All in favor? Good. Unanimous. Councillor Abbott, your fingers didn't flinch. Uh, um, you know what the I guess what I was getting my original my thought was that we should use clause in to understand what the crown charges are about because at that point we've been told. So it's hard to say that it should be going into closed if you don't know. But it's getting closed about. But clause N requires that you have that discussion and closed in any way. Exactly. So it's on the list. Oh, that's clause N is there. So that's we're going to close and then we have a discussion and if you decide, if council decides that it doesn't need to be enclosed, you cheat, then you can right. just right. come back exactly. up. Yeah. That's what I was thinking we should do, but now I'm hesitating because okay, it's just we're going to trust. We need to go into close to have a discussion and then that. All right. Are we fine, Councillor Abbott? Yes. Good, thank you. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Uh, that the meeting be closed to the public on the basis of matters to be considered under the following sections of the Community Charter 91. A part of a council meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one or more of the following. C. Labor relations or other employee relations. F. Law enforcement. If the council considers that disclosure could reasonably be expected to harm the conduct of an investigation under or enforcement of an enactment. N. The consideration of whether a council meeting should be closed under a provision of this section or subsection 2. So if I look at my notes here. <coughs> um, no, you've got me in a quandary. So, I would have suggested that we weren't going to be. Well, first of all, we just read out the motion. Yep. So mm -hmm. now we need to do a second. And okay, can vote. I have a second? All in favor? Good. Passed. Uh, yes, okay. I am going to do this part of council does not reconvene. And, and, and just before we that off, so. The council does not anticipate, I would say, yes, we can be in the open meeting for any purpose other than to adjourn the meeting generally. So said. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We are back from close at uh, 9.27 uh, with the matter to be reported out being one item, and that is that... Um, uh, Council has accepted the amended limited partner agreement with Tamara Ledger. And nothing else to report. I have a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Good. We are done. Please.